As an angler, you will have already seen invasive species such as Japanese knotweed and Himalayan balsam along our watercourses. They spread rapidly and often outcompete native species. When they die back in winter, riverbanks are bare and lack the protection created by layered native vegetation. This allows erosion to be accelerated and the material washed away is deposited, causing increased siltation of fish spawning beds. Invasive plants can also harm humans. Giant hogweed is extremely dangerous as it produces a toxic sap which induces painful blistering of the skin. The effects of these injuries may last for years and can be aggravated by exposure to sunlight. Then there are invasive animals such as mink, Asian clam and zebra mussel. Biosecurity is about reducing the risk of introducing or spreading non-native and invasive plants and animals. Although some invasive species are well established in the Foyle and Carlingford areas, there are many others not yet in our catchments. The control or eradication of non-native species once established is extremely difficult, costly and in many cases almost impossible. Not only will these impact on the ecosystem but also have an adverse effect on angling. For example, floating pennywort and nuttles waterweed choke lakes, making boat and bank fishing very difficult. Prevention and early intervention are far more successful and cost effective. Anglers can play their part in preventing or reducing the spread of invasives by implementing good biosecurity measures. In areas where Himalayan balsam or Japanese knotweed are not yet established, just one new plant can create real problems a few years later. Simple procedures can have a very positive effect. These are check, clean and dry anything that could carry invasive species, particularly before moving from one body of water to another. Your equipment could carry the eggs, larvae or adult stages of animals, or a tiny seed, or even a fragment of a plant which could grow into mature plants and spread. When coarse game or pike angling, arrive at the fishery, ensuring your equipment such as nets, boots and waders are clean and dry. If the fishery has a biosecurity station, disinfect your equipment when you arrive. When leaving a venue, ideally clean your equipment on site before you leave, but if this is not possible, Bag up your equipment before travelling for cleaning and drying later. If complete drying is not possible, use a disinfectant such as Vercon Aquatic 1% Solution or another appropriate disinfectant. Items can be immersed, thoroughly sprayed or wiped down with this solution. Drying is one of the best ways to sanitise your kit, particularly from aquatic species. Dry it thoroughly, as many species such as Nuttall's Waterweed Floating pennywort, Asian clam, zebra mussel and killer shrimp can survive out of water for weeks on damp equipment. As a minimum, equipment should be left to dry for 48 hours. Boats can be major spreaders of invasive species. If you're going to use a boat on a new water, power hose the interior and exterior with hot water. If this is not possible, the boat should be washed down before leaving a waterway. It should then be left to dry for a period of five days before being launched at the new venue. The boat hull, bilge, equipment and trailer should be washed down before launch. Check for and scrape off any plant debris or animals stuck to the boat or an equipment such as anchors, trailers or ropes before leaving the site. Cooling water should be drained from the outboard motor and it should be flushed, preferably with disinfectant solution. The use of mufflers is recommended for disinfecting outboard motors. These are good habits to develop and, if done regularly and promptly, will significantly reduce the risk of spreading disease and non-native species in the Foyle and Carlingford areas. While the majority of anglers do heed biosecurity advice, the failure to do so by even a few could cause harm to our environment and our valuable fish stocks and ultimately 
effect angling as we know it. <laughs>